Please remember to like, subscribe, ring the notification bell, and leave a comment so you don't miss out on money saving tips and ultimately achieving financial freedom with the concepts presented in these videos that are priceless. Hello and welcome back. In this video we talk about Microsoft Power Toys with Fancy Zones. Microsoft Power Toys is a suite of utilities that allow for increased functionality and productivity. In this video we mainly focus on the utility called Fancy Zones, which allow you to split your screen into different groupings, and yes, it also allows you to continue to use your Windows keys plus arrow keys to move between grids and across multiple monitors. If that was not enough, it also allows you to have different grid pattern arrangements on different monitors. This will all make more sense later in this video. Microsoft Power Toys can be a bit overwhelming for the uninitiated. So to that effect, I'm going to take a little longer in this video to walk you step by step for what you need to do. One more pro tip. Samsung has a utility that does something similar called Samsung Easy Setting Box. I use them in conjunction with Fancy Zones so I can get more choices per monitor without having to reassign zones. I have a video on Easy Setting Box that, that I'll leave as a reference on our blog post for this topic. However, if you had to pick just one, I would pick Microsoft Power Toys with Fancy Zones because it gives you far more customization and works with Windows keyboard sh shortcuts and does not have an issue that Easy Setting Box possesses. Which is, from time to time, it finds the wrong display. So the display that is set up as your Display 2, for example, it will pick as Display 3, and so forth. But I do not believe it's an issue only to Easy Setting Box. I think that has to do with you switching inputs or losing track of the original input and instead of checking display settings, it takes a disordered input number. I believe this because I've seen the same thing when sharing Zoom screens. So that's a totally different app that's also having that problem sometimes. However, Microsoft Power Toys with Fancy Zones does not use displays in that manner, so it works more efficiently. The converse of this is if you have a Mac, your Microsoft Power Toys isn't going to work on it, then you, and you'll just have to make the best of it. As always, remember to go to our blog post for step-by-step -step written instructions. The link to our blog post will be in the description below. Now that we've gotten the introduction out of the way, let's get right to it. This is a website from Microsoft, so it's very trustworthy in my book. Uh, the instructions for proceeding forward are listed here, but I'm going to walk you through it. Here are the requirements, and here are alternative methods. So you can use the Microsoft Store, the Windows Package Manager, some Community Drive install tool, not officially supported. I've never used this one. I've used the other two. But it's simple enough to click on Install Power Toys. That will take us here to this release page. What they want us to do next is expand this Assets drop-down if it's not already expanded. So if it was like this, expand it. You'll see that there is an x64, meaning 64-bit operating system version of this executable file. Let's go ahead and download that. There it comes. Let's open that file. But read through it before you agree to anything. Then click Agree. Let me see what options we have. That's fine. I don't. I want it at that default location, but if you don't want it there, maybe you can change it to something else. Click install. There we go. It has successfully installed. Click close. Go to your start menu and 
find where it is and open up the application. And here it is, I've opened the application. If you scroll through here, it's, uh, this is on the general tab. As I stated before, there are a number of utilities. We are only focused on the fancy zones. But by installing this by default, you will end up with some things uh, that you may or may not know about. So this is getting enabled for you, like all this on top, awake. If you don't want some of these, go through and change them as necessary. It's just going to go quickly through these. Color picker, we'll come back to fancy zones, that's the one we're going to focus on. There is a file explorer add-ons. Uh, you got this by installing it, so if you don't want something here, go and change that. I, I will leave all the defaults, it does not affect me in the slightest. There's an image resizer, a keyboard manager, a mouse utility, a power rename, power toys run, a shortcut guide, and a video conference mute. I believe video conference mute is the only one that requires elevation to administrator. And if you do want to use this one, what you have to go go and do is go into general and uh, you will come here and uh, enable this run as administrator. So once you do that, uh, you can utilize that functionality and you need to restart that app once you enable it. I don't need run as administrator for fancy zones, so I'm not going to do that unless it becomes necessary for me. So you come in here, and there are a number of settings I want us to change, but we will get to those shortly. Let's first create some configurations. So by that, I mean click on Launch Layout Editor. So, as you can see, I have already pre-created three custom configurations that I wanted. I'll create one more to show you, but uh, these are the ones they have, these are the default templates they have at the top. The one that most people will use is Priority Grid. They may not create any of these further ones, but uh, I made some changes. I do like this priority grid, but sometimes I don't want the middle to be extra large and the sides to be smaller. So for me, most of the time on my larger monitor, I'm going to be using three grids where I have three equally spaced grids, as opposed to a larger grid in the middle and two smaller grids on the side. On my smaller monitors, I use uh, on my smallest monitor, I use two grids, so two equally spaced grids. And on my medium-sized monitor, my third monitor, sometimes I might use this layout, sometimes I might use something else. Uh, and up here you can see the three monitors that I have. So for this one, let's set this to two grids. For the largest monitor I have, let's set this to, first you have to click here, set that to two grids, select your middle monitor, set that to three grids, and third monitor, let's set that to this layout. I'll change it later, but for video demonstration purposes, this should be good. And let's create, let's create one more grid. Let's call this one, one vertical, six horizontal. And let's click on, let's keep the grid. I haven't used canvases, so not sure exactly how that will work out, but this works fine for me. Let's click create. And notice it has created the grids. Something I want to point out is I'm doing this on my smaller monitor so that it's easy for you to see in the video. But 
I don't care what the sizes are. Uh, when I use it on the larger monitor, the proportions will be correct for that monitor. So you can do this, set it up for small, medium, large monitor, and whichever monitor you select it for, it will just work. So for this, I want to move this out of the way, and I want basically this one to stay, and I want a grid here, and a grid at the bottom, a grid here, and a grid at the bottom. So I'm going to take this horizontal line, and you can get that by pressing down on the spacebar. Uh, one way it makes it vertical, the other way it makes it horizontal. So, again, uh, uh, hold down the shift key, not the spacebar, to alter this direction. And if you want to get rid of something, select it and press the delete key. I don't need to get rid of anything here, so let's press that. Let's do the same here. And that looks relatively correct to me. Uh, and we will apply, save and apply. Now, one thing I like to do with all of my grids is go back and edit it and delete out the spacing. So, I don't care what the highlight distance is, I'll leave that alone at 20, but the space around zones, I don't want to leave extra space that's unutilized. So, I'm going to set that to zero. And now it will use all that space. I went through and did that for all of these. And I would recommend the same for you guys. If I was to use something like this vertic uh, one vertical, six horizontal, I would probably do that at my largest desktop. So something like this, and I'd switch that over to using this. I did just did this for dem demonstration purposes for you guys but uh, it might be viable for some uh, uses, depending on what you need. So for now, I'm just going to switch this back to three grids. Let's close that out. And now, the most important things. I don't want my zones to span across monitors. That's one thing. This isn't checked by default, but if you that's something you care about, you can check that. For me, I definitely don't want that. But what I do want, and I've already set this, what you want to set is override Windows Snap. Turn that on, leave this alone with the Windows key and the up and down arrow, or the left and right. That's the default behavior anyways and uh, unless you want something different then you can maybe change that but I like that behavior and also very importantly click on move window between zones across all monitors if you don't click this button whichever monitor you're doing this you will stay in that monitor when you press the, that left and right arrow key but it's much easier to move across them quickly by pressing this And the other thing I'm going to click, but I have not used before, is move newly created windows to their last known zone. I think that's useful, and what I suspect that will do is when I open Chrome, for example, it will put that in the same spot that I had it last. And I think that's great. If I always want to have my uh, vision uh, pointed at one spot, or maybe an explorer window always open at the same spot, I think this will do that for me. I have not tested that, the rest of it I have tested. Give it a shot and see if what you like. That's essentially it for this, and let's give it a try. You can take this, put it wherever you like. Notice up here I have the Samsung Easy Setting Box. Monitor 1, Monitor 2, Monitor 3. If I wanted to click here, it will put it on Monitor 3 on the far right. Monitor 3 in the middle. This is Monitor 1, so let's put it on the bottom. So this allows me to have two different apps performing two different functions. 
that was the e Samsung Easy Setting Box. Now I'm going to hold down the Shift key and I'm going to put it here. So it's just that simple. Let's make this large again. Come back in here. And this time I want to change the layout of this screen one to a two grid layout. Let's do that. And I'm going to hold the settings box and now it's a two grid layout instead of a seven grid layout. And that's basically it. I find this app very useful. I think it increases productivity quite a bit. And I hope you found this video helpful and useful as well. Thank you for taking the time to watch the video. We hope you found it useful and hopefully it solved a problem you were facing. Remember that you will find step-by-step -step information on our blog pages on every topic covered by each video. And our products page showcases each item we have discussed to date. You can find us at squareq.com. Now we will quickly tell you why it benefits you to subscribe to our channel. Ring the notification bell and leave a comment. Simply put, we believe we will get wealthy together by saving money and making far better decisions. We always try to skip the fluff and get to the point so we don't waste anyone's time. As you can see, a massive amount of time and effort goes into each video. The videos are good, the content is priceless. As we grow, we will always give back to our subscriber base. We hope you act now and subscribe. Ring the bell and leave a comment. Because if you are not able to take action, then this opportunity will simply pass you by. Good day.